What's up guys, welcome back. So today's project is going to be a beautiful modern planter box. Let's do this. Okay, so step one, go get some 2x4x8. You will need four of them to make this planter box. I start by cutting all the 2x4 to the right lane. We need four 12 inches long pieces and we need 20 13.5 inches long pieces. And because we want a modern look, I use my table saw to rip cut all the pieces to give them a nice square edge. I start by removing one quarter on one side of all the pieces, then I do the same on the other side, so the final width of all the pieces will be 3 inches wide. So your 24 pieces should look like this. And now, let's make some pocket hole. I start with the four 12 inches long pieces that will make the bottom of our planter box. I mark then I drill each pocket hole using my new K4 pocket hole jig. This new Craig jig costs a lot of money, but it's way faster and way easier than my Craig jig mini, so I think it's a good investment if you're going to make a lot of woodworking project. The first three have four pocket hole, but the last one have six pocket hole, so the four pieces can be screwed to each other's and can also be screwed to the side of the planter. Next step, make the pocket hole for the side of the planter. We're going to make two pocket holes to connect each pieces together and also two pocket holes on the top so we can connect this row to the next row. And here again, mark and drill all the pocket holes for the side of the planters. If you plan to make this planter box, check my description, I've included a link to my instructables where you can download a plan of all the pocket holes location. So the first row should look like this, and we can't drill the pocket holes at the same location for all the pieces. Here's why. Because I want my corner to have a box style joint, the second row will need to be symmetrical to the first one. So that means that the first row will be the same as the third one, and the second row will be the same as the fourth one. So we end up with eight pieces with the pocket holes on the left, and 8 pieces with the pocket holes on the right. And for the last row 4 pieces, we only need pocket holes on the side. Alright, now we can screw all our pieces together. I'm using some Craig Blue Coat pocket hole screw. These are 2.5 inch long. So I start by screwing the base together, then I move to the side. I start by assembling the four pieces that will make the top of our planter. And as you can see, these are the one with only two pocket holes. So I start by assembling two corners, then I will complete the whole square. I use my clamp to make the work easier, so nothing's move when I screw the parts together. And we are done with the top part. Now repeat the same thing with the 16 other pieces, and we are ready to assemble the five parts together. I do all the assembly of the five parts upside down. So I start with the top part at the bottom. And the reason I'm doing this is because the way I made the pocket holes, no water won't be trapped in these holes if some waters go behind the plastic liner. During the assembly, use your clamp to make sure nothing's move and to reduce the gap between the rows. Continue like that until the five parts are screwed together. And the sides are done. But we still need to add the bottom. So I flip it over again, and to help me screw the bottom parts at the right spot, I use some scrap wood as shim, then I can screw everything together. I'm using some 2x4 pieces as legs to give my planter a 1 quarter inch raised look, and that way the planter won't sit directly on the ground. I glue them in place using some outdoor wood glue. Next, we want to hide the pocket holes on the top row because they will be visible. I use a 3 8 wall that I have cut in small pieces. Then I glue them in the pocket holes. And once the glue has dry, I can cut them flush using my multi-tool. And now, the fun part or not, sanding. This part is important for this project because that's how all of the 2x4 will be flush to each other. So I start with my belt sander using a 80 grit sandpaper. 
I can't always sign in the direction of the grain because our goal is to make all of our pieces flush to each other, but this will leave some big scratch. And to remove them, I will make a pass using my orbital sander with a 80 grit sandpaper, then I will make another pass using some 120 grits. And I finished the top in the inside using my mouse palm sander with a 120 grit sandpaper. And now that we are finished with the sanding, we can move on and add some color. I am using some exterior wood stain. This brand is Seco from PPG and the color is Boat House. I know it can be hard to find this exact brand outside Eastern Canada, but I'm pretty sure you can find a similar color. And I had some leftover from my bed frame video, so it don't have any cost to this project. And now that the first coat is done, I put another coat on it. And this will also darken the color a little bit. Alright, it's dry and we can move on to the next step. To prevent any water damage to the wood, I add a plastic liner inside the box. And because it's not easy to wrap it inside, I fold the plastic liner to shape it like a box before putting it inside my planter box. See? Now it's easy. Next, we need to add the drain to the spot. I remove the liner and I drill a hole the same size of the pipe. In this case, 5 8 of an inch. I replace the liner and I tack it in place using my stapler. Make sure you only put tacks on the top edge of the plastic liner. Now let's add the trim. Remember when we rip cut all our pieces at the start of this project? I will use the leftover to make an inside trim. This will look better and also will prevent the water to go behind the plastic liner. And we are almost done. I add the pipe to the hole we drilled earlier, then I put a geotextile over it so no dirt can go through the drain. And we are done! Now let's put some life in it. But just a quick note here, I will stain the underside before doing so. So I've made this planter for my Cataracterum palm. The species require only medium light, so it's perfect for my deck. In fact, this plant is a super easy care house plant. So when the super cold Canada's winter is coming, I will bring it inside. So thanks for watching guys. If you have any question, ask me below in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, abonnez-vous, see you next time, bye bye.